Kevin Forbes Exhibition 250 Remix. And uh, yeah, it's a very timely topic that came from this project. When Tegan first proposed the project, it was based on her doing research in Victoria and finding a story to really latch onto and develop the project. So uh, when she got here and told me she ordered a thousand bunny feet keychains, um, I was pretty excited to see what was going to happen with that. So in her time here, she's been um, doing further research and going up to the campus and talking to people and really getting an understanding of how that story has evolved. So I'll let her speak a bit more to that, but I'll just tell you a bit more about Tegan before we hand it over to her. Um, so Tegan uh, completed her Master's of Fine Art in 2007 at Concordia University in Montreal in conjunction with designing and teaching Concordia's first print media class um, that focused on <coughs> interventional practices and works in public spaces. Um, she's also taught at the Alberta College of Art and Design in the print media department. Um, she's worked on projects with galleries across Canada and internationally uh, she's uh, exhibited in Germany at the Bauhaus University and Prop Shop in Weimar and Shelter Gallery in Berlin. And um, uh, she is now, for the past year, has been living in New York uh, where she um, is went to advance her practice of outdoor collaborative projects working with Creative Arts Workshop for Kids, uh, where she contributed to an after-school project designing and painting murals in North Harlem. So we're very pleased to have in hosting Tegan and to see what she's come up with uh, with some of the stories that happen here in Victoria. So I'll hand it over. Thanks. Well, thank you everybody for coming. This is such an honor on a, the end of a cold night in the fog to come down to the gallery and be part of this exhibition. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, like Nicole mentioned, when I started this project, I wasn't living here, I wasn't in Victoria, I was at least, and I knew I wanted to do something relevant to the community and uh, have community involvement. So I was looking online every now and then at different articles and publications that were happening with current events, and um, the rabbits conversation kept reappearing, and I thought it was really interesting, and the fact that I'd never heard of this before. And, it seemed like a unique situation for a city to have such, um, you know, conversations around environment, public space, institutions, and whatnot. So I had, I got in my head that this is what I wanted to do, and I was reading some articles. I arrived in Victoria at the beginning of the month and started talking to people in the city, and that's when the the project really took shape for me because. Um, Hearing people's first-hand stories of how they relate to the rabbits, how they relate to their environment, and um, the opinions and emotions that they have shed a huge light on this project because it was it was a personal conversation that, that people were sharing with me. As an outsider, as a as an artist, I'm I got you know the privilege of hearing these stories about how people. Um, live and love and respond to their environment, this environment of Victoria. So I decided that with this installation there was a lot of emotion going on and um, a lot of strong feelings and I didn't, I intentionally didn't want to make myself uh, take a side or add fuel to the fire of conflict that was uh, it's already happening. So. Um, let me describe how this all worked out. The words that you see behind the rabbit's feet are all words that have been printed um, in newspapers and internet articles, and there's the binder on the, on the chair over there where you can go through the articles and read the words, read the articles that I read and see how I highlighted them. So I took the words out and I put them arbitrarily on the wall, and then I've hung these little rabbit's feet on the wall. And so the invitation with this installation to you, to the community, is to come in and, and simply read. Read the words, read the conversation that's ongoing here in the city. And touch the feet if you want, touch the, touch the paper, get a feel for it. If you see something, a word that responds to you, you're invited to take the keychain and you can keep it and you can leave the room. But by altering the installation and by participating in that manner, you you reveal a word, you all of a sudden make the word of your selection really clear and legible. So the next person coming in has a clarity with the word you've revealed, but you know the words that you haven't uncovered are still somewhat um, hidden. And so each day, 
feet are removed from here, the conversation and the context of this installation changes just a little bit. And on top of this, that I've, of what I've created, there's um, space for you to contribute your own expression and your own ideas and your own thoughts as they evolve and, and as you respond to the situation in the community or this situation that we've created here. So there's paper and pens and feel free to, to add to the installation. Now the cool thing that I think is cool is every night the gallery will replenish the rabbit's feet that are missing. And so even the, the ad, not the ads, but the comments that are left down here, they'll be, they'll be included into the, the ongoing discourse. And so the next day, with the like, slate white clean of comments from the night before, someone can come in and this is now an option to take a rabbit's foot and reveal this part of the, um, the expression in an ongoing way. <laughs> so um, it's sort of, it's the launch, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, uh, it's, it's up to you. It's an uh, installation that I started, but it's for your community and it's here for two months. So enjoy, take it <laughs> Thank you. Do you have enough rabbit's feet for two months? <laughs> I think so. I mean, it would be a pleasure if we ran out because it meant that many people came and participated. Dini, did you want to maybe um, just give a bit of insight into maybe some of the other projects or just your practice in general that might have, like, what kind of led up to you being interested in exploring this? Oh, sure. Um, my work, my formal training is in printmaking, but about seven years ago, I started moving away and got interested into, into how art was communicated in an open forum. Street art, graffiti, things that are free, things that are accessible, things where you don't need to go into a space and know that you're viewing art. It's uh, about encountering it in the, in the everyday and spontaneous environments. So um, with that as my inspiration, I would always be thinking how can my art be a subtle intervention into public space? So, um, and on a side note, I, uh, I love to travel, <laughs> so I was like, spontaneous intervention in a city that I don't know, and as a tourist artist, because, you know, if you're coming into someone else's city, what right or entitlement do you have to, you know, say, this is what, what your community is about, and I'm just going to throw this and clutter your space. So, working as a tourist, and working in a kind of ephemeral manner, I... I did some projects that, um, let's think of one, that involved postcards. And um, when I was in Germany, one of my projects in Weimar was to recreate this super, like, tourist card in bright yellow that says Weimar. It's one of those things you pay a dollar for and you're going to send it to your friends because you finally made it to the culture capital of Europe <laughs> since 1999. And, uh, and there, you've know, been there, done that. So the postcard, um, I had photoshopped the images of all these, you know, restored beautiful houses. But I had taken the windows out of all the all the photo or all the houses. So on the first read, it says a bright tacky kitsch uh, postcard. But on a closer look, there's something eerie because every every house is so closed. There's no no view, no entry, no exit. It's a very still and. Um, and contained house. And so um, I, I printed, gosh, like 2,000 of these. And I went to all the postcard stands in Weimar and all the ones I could find in Berlin. And I would just deposit chunks of my postcards in these uh, tourist stands. And it was also during World Cup, so there was a lot of focus on, on Germany. And so I, to prove that my item, that my work was a valid art piece, I would then directly take one of my postcards, leaving a chunk in the stand, and go and see if they'd sell it back to me. And so most of the time, the person would look at the card and not recognize it as their product, but when you're offering someone money, they, like 99% of the time will take it, and I would collect the receipts. So um, it was this exchange of, of having something odd, if not like, Kind of eerie or or not intentional for them to sell and um, an exchange of money and there yeah it's it just kind of 
had this evolution of, um, of art and novelty, and I felt I was communicating my thoughts, but in a kind of, you know, around the economic realm. Anyways, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that clearly, but in my head it makes sense. <laughs> and so there's that postcard piece. I've done t-shirt pieces and um, just stuff where you go into a community and listen to what's happening, find the subtle, subtle discourses that are there, and then have, have a slight interaction, a small, a small response. And the idea of exchange, a, a card for money, a foot for a thought, it's, um, it has a participatory element to it that I like in my work because it's not just, it's one-sided, it has a reciprocity. Any one story or one kind of expression from people that stood out more than others? It wasn't a story as much as um, the way the story was told, this way, like the words that were chosen. And um, the, the response, if I would just say, hey, I'm an artist, and I'm in town, I don't know the city well, but you hear this, this habit thing going on at the university, I'm trying to work on an art piece, what do you know about it? And that it just opened, it opened doors for these communications, and some people, you know, roll their eyes and be like, oh my god, it's just ongoing, I don't know if it's ever going to end, and other people were like, oh, I don't want to talk about it, or this is my experience, and I know someone, and call this person, like it, it had all these veins and threads and this whole feel to it that from being out of the city, reading articles, like what you read, the media is just so thin compared to the actual conversations and the context and seeing the land and how the community uses the land and respects it. And um, that, that awareness and the, um, the thoughtfulness, like, in New York, I don't think this a story really, like this would really happen. I, there's no space. <laughs> it's a whole other vibe. <laughs> but that's but it, it makes Victoria really cool. I mean, how many places on earth are the rabbits considered? I mean, whatever, what, however the conversation goes, just the idea that the conversation is possible is a really interesting aspect. So, yeah. I think they're in Texas now. <laughs> yeah. Did I hear that by a certain date they're going to be annihilating them? Uh, that was released on Thursday last week. I think um, my understanding is that it's trying to catch and relocate right now, and then by the end of February, humanely trap and kill. Humanely trap and kill. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't think there's many left. I mean, I went up to the university three times and I only saw one rabbit. So, it's really It takes two, right? <laughs>